how was Clayton Kershaw's bullpen yesterday, and how do you see his progression going? I mean, I think it was a good step forward, um, and and I think the most important thing right now is that you know we are going step by step. Um, you know, he's able to throw his normal pregame or you know uh, in between start bullpens, uh, right around 34 pitches through all his pitches. Um, thought his command of his fastball was good. Uh, I think the breaking stuff uh, at times was there. Um, you can kind of see it kind of going in and out of as far as the effectiveness of it, but. Uh, you know, I think it was another good step forward. Uh, we'll see how he comes out of it today uh, and then, you know, make plans for whatever that next step is. Uh, might be another bullpen, um, potentially maybe to face hitters. Uh, not quite sure. So I, I think right now, every time it's more really read and react and, and then progress from there. And from your standpoint, what does his buildup look like at this point in the season? And is the priority to have him stretched out to being a starter or kind of get him in there once he's feeling ready to go? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think the progression is, you know, is day by day. Um, and, and we got to go, uh, we go as far as his body, you know, allows us to go and allows him to go. And, and we listen to Clayton and what, you know, his desires and what he feels he can do uh, day to day. So um, as far as like a, a long-term build out, you know, honestly, I, I haven't got that far. Uh, I don't think we've gotten that far. I mean, we all have ideas of what we want to do or what he would like to do. Uh, but we'll progress to the next step, which is hopefully early next week. It'll either be an extended bullpen or potentially hitters. And then, you know, once he checks that and goes through that activity, uh, we'll see how he comes out of it and move forward from there. And with Walker Bueller, his name has been at the top of the conversation when it comes to the Cy Young Award. What has stood out to you most about him this season? Hi, Austin. <laughs> uh, you know, Walk, Walker's been, you know, unbelievable. Uh, I think the one thing that he's been is consistent, you know, from the get-go. Uh, and I've, I've talked about, you know, his desire to go wire to wire and, and kind of, you know, he's done a lot of great things in the playoffs. And what I think he, after last year, he really wanted to put together a, a good regular season, not just, you know, a postseason, but a really good, strong regular season. And obviously I think it speaks for itself what he's been able to do. I think he's shown... You know, an ability to adapt, um, uh, you know, his game, his pitches, um, his ability to set things up, um, not just be all power all the time. Um, you know, he's, he's looking for quick outs. He's looking for weak contact, but he can also still get the punch when he needs it. Um, he's learning how to manage, you know, pitching in through the course of a long season as well. Um, but I think most importantly is like when we needed big games, uh, he stepped up and, and he's given us those games. And you know, I think the, the main thing or the, not the main thing, I think one of the big things that, you know, you can look at when you're looking at starters around the league is what he's done. I mean, I think he's gone, if I'm not mistaken, you know, six innings, almost every start. Uh, maybe there was one he didn't uh, and he's gone seven innings, you know, almost 80 percent of the time or into the seventh inning. So, you know, I think it just shows his ability to get through lineups. Uh, to navigate, not always attack the guys the same way, give them different looks, give them different looks during the bats. Um, he, he's having a he's pretty special season. Um, and, you know, he's, he's carried us in a lot of ways in that department. So uh, it's been nice to see his evolution this year. Next question is from Steve Henson. Go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. There we go. Hey, Mark. Uh, two quick questions about Phil Bickford. What's been the key to him uh, immediately becoming a reliable bullpen piece for you guys after underperforming in Milwaukee? And secondly, is developing a changeup what's keeping him from becoming a potential starter someday? Is he developing a third pitch? Yeah, I, I think to the first one, I, I'm not, um, you know, I don't want to go back too far on what he did or did not do in Milwaukee. I, I think the one thing that uh, has been great for Phil is, you know, when he came over, you know, we acknowledged what he did well. Uh, we, we presented to him exactly what we felt he did well. And we just asked him to be himself, be himself on the field, be himself off the field, uh, really assimilate yourself into our culture and, and what we do. And, and I think he's had a lot of veteran presence and veteran leadership down in that bullpen. Uh, at the, you know, early in the year, it was with David Price, um, you know, Corey, you know, for a little bit, um, you know, Jimmy Nelson, I think. So I, I think he had some guys that took him under his wing as well. Um, and then we just said, you know, just like I said, I think we asked him to go be himself out there. 
He always felt very convicted. He could throw his fastball located down in the zone early in counts. Uh, he understood the way his fastball worked up in the zone, but he knew how he he knew how to effectively use his fastball to get himself into counts and get out of the counts. The slider has been unbelievable. Um, and, and so he's just put a really good run in. And, and like I said, I think the main thing is, is just challenge him, like, go be yourself, dominate what you do best, uh, and trust that, you know, we'll take care of you and put you in positions to succeed. Uh, and then I think as we, you know, he started trusting himself, trusting us, uh, we really challenged him to kind of take that next step and he has taken it and, and, and just kicked the door down. And so, um, you know, he's been great for us. Uh, he's, a, he's a great guy to have on our team. Uh, guys love him. And, and so he's been a lot of fun and it's been fun to watch him perform uh, and execute pitches in some big situations. Um, and I think as far as the changeup, yeah, he, he's definitely fooling around with some changeups. Uh, he's been playing with it. Uh, he's thrown a couple here or there in the games, uh, but it does, isn't something that we've leaned on quite yet. But it, it's definitely something, a work in progress. And and potentially, yeah, I mean, I think he becomes a three-pitch mix, and I think he gives him another weapon against the left-handers um, that I think whether he's starting or relieving, I think completely just adds value to to his arsenal. Thank you. Next question is from J.P. Hornshire. Go ahead. Hey, Mark, what's next for Tony Gonsolin? Uh, Tony's going to throw a, a bullpen today, and then I think he's going to face hitters again on Monday um, here at Dodger Stadium. Probably do a uh, – he did like a one-plus the other day in San Diego. He's probably going to do two full innings um, on Monday, uh, and then we'll see how he comes out of that and, and move forward um, probably towards the end of the week and, and see where we're at. But uh, he's been feeling really good. He threw the ball really well the other day in San Diego. Uh, he's going to do a little tune-up, normal kind of side like we do in between starts. Uh, and then get after it again on Monday to face hitters. Thinking about the volume of guys who have dealt with injuries, some for the first time, some pretty long-term this year. And I'm wondering if you find yourself playing psychologist just a little bit more than usual, trying to help guys avoid the frustration that usually comes with injuries. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it, it's been a, an interesting year, I think across baseball. I mean, it's not just us, so... Uh, but it has been interesting with the injuries. And yeah, there's, there's definitely a mental, emotional component to having physical injuries, especially when they're prolonged injuries, uh, whether you're trying to pitch through them or whether it completely shuts you down, you know, say in Corey's case uh, for a very extended period of time. Um, it's tough because, you know, it, most of these guys and all these guys, the reason that they make it here to the big leagues is their competitors, competitors first. Uh, they want to be out there. They want to be part of the team. They want to help guys win ball games. Um, and, and being on the sidelines is extremely tough. And so uh, I, I think the one thing we do a very good job of is, is showing them some empathy, understanding like where they're at um, and know that like we have patience in, in the process. I think that's one thing that our front office does a really good job of doing is building depth uh, so that we don't have to you know, rush guys back and rely on them. Uh, before it's, you know, before they're ready, completely ready. And we don't mean just ready from a volume standpoint or, you know, can you do, you know, three or four innings or whatever. It's more like, can you effectively get outs at this level? Uh, because games matter specifically at this time of year. Uh, and I, I think that's the one thing that is nice is that we can, we tell these guys, look, we have patience uh, and we can wait for you to get healthy. Because when we do, when we do put guys out there, we want them to be, convicted and confidence in, in what they can do uh, and not having that slight reservation in the back of their head if, if they're completely back. We want to make sure that they feel completely healthy and ready to go and they feel that their stuff's in a really good spot like it would be coming out of a, a spring training. Next question is from Kerry Osborne. Go ahead. Mark, there's been a lot of guys who've come in mid-season. When you have guys come in, generally, what is the plan? And for yourself, is it like cramming for a test? And at what point do you start to evaluate and give them ideas and implement those ideas? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, I, you know, I think a little bit, a lot of it credit goes to our front office and our baseball ops guys. Um, they give us a pretty good uh, scouting report and breakdown of what, you know, what guys do effectively, what guys have struggled with, uh, you know, things that we can exploit. Um, and so I, I think we, you know, and I say we, myself, Connor McGinnis, Josh Barr, Danny Lehman, um, you know, the four of us, you know, kind of really take a holistic approach. 
Um, you, you bring the performance staff into that equation, you bring our training staff into that equation, and we take a holistic approach of like, okay, um, it's let's have conversations. I, I think first it starts with a lot of questions uh, from all of us, trying to get an understanding of what makes guys tick. Um, you know what, you know what are they like, or what do they like? Are they delivery guys, mechanic guys, they spin guys, they you know grip rip type guys? Do they want to do certain things? Because sometimes there's ideas that they've gotten uh, that they don't feel comfortable with, and I and I think this goes back to again is understanding who your player is and understanding on what they what their wants and their needs are, and I think we do a pretty decent job of that. You know we don't always get it right of trying to get an understanding of what they want to do. And then we slowly just start, you know, kind of building relationships around that with different guys uh, from the coaching staff and the performance staff and, and truly trying to just build that, that trust and that network of how we do things here. And sometimes it's a little bit of a wait and see, um, even in, in a big first case, uh, it was a little bit of, you know, initial conversation. We understood, we kind of had our ideas, but you want to see them go out, you know, we want to see them go out and, um, you know, perform and, and kind of see it for yourself as well. Um, and, I, and I think guys just really, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, what do you do well? And, and really try to hammer that home. Let's really hammer what you do well to start. And then we can build from there and, and just trying to lay that foundation uh, with guys of, you know, we're in this together um, in more of a partnership or a collaboration. It's never about like, we need you to do this. We want you to do this. Um, because guys have their own opinions and, and we really have to take what they feel they can do and, and really put a lot of weight in that. And then I think we build from there. And uh, like I said, I think our guys, I mean, we've had a lot of pitchers in this year, uh, guys that we didn't even have in spring training. Um, and, and I think one it's to the players that welcome guys in coming in and, and their input and their, you know, conversations back and forth on the field. And then I think our, you know, from a staff level, again, I think we do a really good job of, uh, or at least, I mean, I guess that sounds a little promoting, but I think we as a group feel really confident in each other's abilities, whether it's Connor doing stuff or Danny doing stuff or Josh doing stuff or BMAC and Trav. Uh, we have trust in, in, our, um, in our process and how we go about getting guys better and executing on the field. We've got time for one more. Go ahead, Byron. Hey, Mark, uh, now that you got a chance to work with uh, Scherzer for a month or so now, what's his game planning and preparation look like uh, seeing up close as a pitching coach? Uh, it's, it's intense. Um, you know, he, you know, he said it from the beginning, again, it's like asking questions. How do you want to prepare for starts? And, and um, you know, he's like, look, I do my work. You do your work. Uh, Danny does his work. Catcher does his work. We come together and then let's have it out. And uh, he wants – um, you know, he wants disagreements. He wants to know like everybody's thoughts. Um, but he studies a lot, you know, he, he has his, um, you know, kind of his, uh, process that he goes about things that he looks at a lot of numbers and, and charts that he looks at that, you know, he's brought with him over the years from, you know, the years in Washington and, and probably before that. And, um, now our guys have built that out for him as well. So he has kind of that information. Um, and he studies, he studies hard and he's got a really good understanding. Um, you know, it was, it was nice, uh, and unique, you know, because he pitched against the Phillies, um, yeah, and Houston Phillies and the Mets and the Mets again. And so he had, you know, obviously probably a better understanding of the Phillies and the Mets than we did. Um, uh, but then obviously as the things turned when we played San Diego, he leaned on us more. So, um, it, it's fun to watch him study. Uh, it's fun to watch him or listen to him talk through the game on how he's going to, you know, get into counts, set up guys, uh, do different things, and then obviously try to get guys out. Um, so it, it's been fun to watch. Um, you know, everybody, every starter we have, you know, does a lot of work on their own. Um, and then we all kind of come together and everyone's unique and different in their own way. But uh, he, he's definitely really prepared for starts. Um, and he has a really good understanding of what he wants to do, you know, from first time through to the, you know, hopefully third or fourth time through. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.